Thank you, Freak. And all right then. Now 2-1 to EG. The momentum has swung back. The Art of War did not work that time for Cloud9 Temp and Daphne. <laughs> they could not block EG's strategy. Only six kills to one in this game. Why was this game so fast? Fastest game we've had of the series, 30 minutes, but slow paced. Mm. Well, I think uh, EG did a really good job. They, I think they banned Sorok this game, and they also took away Nidalee's Nidalee from Bishu, which was probably a key point to their strategy. And Bishu looked like he wasn't really as comfortable on Lulu as he was with Soraka and Nidalee probably practiced those exclusively. And EG just really played it to their style, where they were just objective focused, and C9 Tempest was on the back foot the whole entire time, and they just ran this poke comp with Morgana, and they didn't ban Morgana and took it instead, and just really methodically played out the game and took over. Yeah, it was really methodical here. With the taking Nidalee away and getting rid of the Soraka, we did talk about Bishu at the start of the series. How do you think he performed in this game on Lulu? Um, so Lulu can kind of be a playmaker, but she really requires your team or like someone else to get into the, the front so you can like ulti them. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it would be like the Evelyn or the Aurelia. But what happens if you're losing lanes with such like a team, um, it's kind of hard to figure out when you want to make the play or how to make the play. And uh, if, you look if you look at their team comps, EG is a team comp who wants to poke, and they're the team comp who will make you come into them and just disengage with like Morgana and uh, Nidalee and just you know kind of just kite backwards and 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 poke you down while while you're coming in. So what happens is it's not up to EG to make the play because all EG has to do is just stand there and throw spears and throw Lucian Qs until they get low HP and then you just kind of take their towers, which is the objective. Yeah. Right. So it's up to Cloud9 Tempest to make the plays with teleport. Uh, Evelyn ulti and uh, you know like Lulu ulti and, and speed to like maybe create flanks so that they can get into the back line and make and make a pick or, you know or win the team fight that way. But the problem is uh, I think was the karma the karma pick and karma isn't really a, a, an initiator like uh, they're trying to go for the shields but and and like the, the super fast speed but if they're not gonna be flanking well and they can't manage to win team fights that way then it's better to go for someone who can like hard engage like Leona. And we actually saw a really good example of them not being able to engage on Evil Geniuses at about 14 minutes, where probably the biggest team fight of the game ended up breaking out, if we can pull that up on the screen. Lincoln Afro, could you kind of take me through this failed initiation, even though they tried real hard for it? Uh, Kez was trying to flank, but I think he could have came at a better angle to like get in front and cover some distance. But they failed the initiation with the Lulu knockup, and then Lee Sin comes to TP in, and Snoopy lands a good cocoon onto Kez, and they take him out very quickly. And they just kick Yuzuki back, and <laughs> oh wow, Yuzuki, that's right, he made that made awesome that nice play. play. Yeah, fancy. But overall, what you were talking about, Link, it kind of showed through in that fight how EG could just pull back again and again. I mean, Elise and the Morgana, it's a lot of just single target duration crowd control. How does Cloud9 Tempest make plays in this situation, right? So you you really your only form of your of engage is really Evelyn ulti. Like uh, you have like your Irelia like stun, and then you have like your Lula ulti. But if they can't get into the back line, or if the back line like flashes out, which they did uh, after the Evelyn ulti, like, like he only ulti two people, like nearly cougared out, and then Elise just kind of like walked away. Um, after that point, if you can't like get on top of them, then they're just going to keep cutting you because Morgana has Black Shield. Uh, they also have uh, Morgana's Q, which stuns people. Um, and also Elise Cocoon. Uh, it just locks people down coming in. And it really can't get into the back line because, you know, Lucian will just kite. And what happens is the instant that happens, um, uh, EG's team comp allows them to uh, re-engage, and then they can just win the team fight that way. Yeah. This series has been very interesting. Game one was kind of an Inox top lane show. Game two was a bit of the Rise show. This one was just the strategic game that was all spears, as Link actually said. How does EG actually carry momentum this time instead of faltering again so they can win the series? Uh, they actually won pick and ban phase really solid, and uh, Cloud9 Tempest really were on uncomfortable picks with Bishu in the mid lane, and they really didn't have the control that was needed to win that game. And when you do play against a poke comp, it's very important that you do vision control and then you flank, which is how you're going to beat them. You have to be able to get on the back line at the same time with at least two to three people to lock them down and take them out. Otherwise, they're going to do what they did to you, which is disengage for free and be able to re-engage for free. But it's really, really hard to flank because it requires a lot of team coordination. Mm -hmm. And yes. you know, um, and that's something you mentioned Cloud9 Tempest has been really struggling with. Exactly. Years. And uh, you'll see like the best teams, like in fact, Cloud9, you know, the, the main team, 
they're they're one of the best teams at flanking, and and they're one of the few NA teams that have been successful, and that's why they're so good at team fighting. And um, you can also see that they're so good at team coordination. But uh, Cloud Nine Tempest is uh, um, they lack a lot of that, so um, it requires them to just communicate like really really well, and they have to uh, just step it up in order to um, just win win team fights like that. Yeah. So if they're trying to avoid this happening again, they switch over to the other side. Uh, picks and bans are obviously going to change a little bit. EG in this last one banned Ziggs, Rise, and Soraka. Do they do the same thing on the red side, or do they have to switch something up? Um, I think what EG did was perfectly fine. Um, they just need to control mid, and then it'll it'll be really good. And and also uh, Yazuki is one of their the main threats on on uh, on Cloud9 Tempest. And if if Yazuki can't split push first Inox, then it's really good because usually Bishu isn't going to be making plays. Altec is usually just kind of off farming in you know in the top lane for whatever reason. And uh, if if EG is able to just kind of carry this objective um, based game, mm -hmm. then I think they're going to take it. And Afremu, if Cloud9 Tempest wants to try and take this one, what would they have to do in the pick and ban phase? I think Lee Sin might be an issue with Inox because he's proven that he's really good on that champion and he basically shut down Yuzuki from being able to do anything. So Yuzuki really has to maybe get the rise, but it'll probably be banned out or be on the jacks and or maybe just ban out Lee Sin to be able to let him do work. All right. Thank you guys very much, Aphromo Link. We have plenty more action to come. EG is just one win away from securing their return to the North American LCS. We'll see if they can get it done in our fourth game between Cloud9 Tempest and